Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Somerville High School and the Somerville Girls Basketball Senior Night. Many of you who know me know I come from a strong tradition of basketball from Fall River, Massachusetts. And to slide into this job and be in Somerville, Massachusetts, it's, it's like being at home. It, it's so much like being at home that I can look across in the stands and see my childhood friend, Becky Masterson, who went to grade school, we went to grade school together in high school, and now her child is going to be a Somerville Highlander one day. So again, a wonderful tradition, and I appreciate you allowing this Fall River kid a shot at the varsity program here at Somerville. So without further ado, Ladies and gentlemen, tonight we would like to take a moment to acknowledge the class of 2019 from both schools. For Salem, number five, DeLacy Fernandez. Number 24, Deborah Dominguez. And number 35, Hennessy Beltroy. And now to introduce the seniors and guests for your Somerville Highlanders. Number 11, Gurpreet Carr with Jesse, Jasleen, and Nermel. It's all good, just keep going. Go out in the middle, Gurpreet. Number 12, Taylor Casey with her mom, Nicole, her dad, Sean, and the rest of her family. Number 15, Caitlin Seeley with her mother, Lisa, and her grandmother, Stella. No, stay, family. Family, stay. Family, stay. There you go. Number 21, Carla Salamanca Flores with her mom, Anna Flores. Number 25, Megan Barnes with Kathy Barnes, Larry Barnes, and her friends and family. Number 32, Kiara Pontes with Maria Pontes, Kaya Lopez, and Adonis Lopez. Okay, now here's my time. You can face me, family. The first one to go is going to be Caitlin Seely. Caitlin Seely has improved so much in four months. She is the true definition of a Highlander. Never missed a practice, no matter how hard things have become, she always gives 100%. Not only has Caitlin excelled on the basketball team, she is an avid dancer, a member of the dance team. With all of these extracurricular activities, she still manages to pull off a 3.89 GPA in the classroom. Caitlin is a loyal friend, and we will miss her tenacity and her boxing out abilities next year. Thank you, Caitlin. Oh, you, you go ahead. You can do it. We have a lot of flowers. Okay, next one, Kiara Ponce. I've had the pleasure of coaching Kiara for three years. Kiara is hardworking and caring. She cares about her teammates so much so that she may or may not have karate kicked an opposing player who split Jamima Joseph's head open last year. Her laugh is infectious, and I will miss that raspy scream from the bench. Come on, guys! Kiara, Kiara has aspirations to study zoology in college, which she will do, and we wish you the best of luck, Kiara. Thank you. Carla Flores. Like Caitlin, 
Carla came into Somerville and immediately went to JV. Carla missed one practice this year. She came to a practice with a fever and the coaching staff asked her to please go home. <laughs> Carla is one of the kindest, funny, and hardworking students I've ever had. Rather than miss practice due to babysitting, she brings her brother to practice. No matter what is going on, on, on in Carla's life, she's always smiling and will give you everything she has on the court. <laughs> Gapreet Kaur. Like Kiara, Gapreet has had me for three years. Small in stature, huge in commitment. Gapreet has improved so much over four years. She plays basketball, cheers, and has a part-time job at Champs which benefits the coaching staff when the new Jordans are released. <laughs> Capri can be heard giving encouragement to her teammates and is the epitome of a team player. We will miss those words of constant encouragement. Thank you, Capri. <laughs> Megan Barnes. Megan took a year off and is now back with us. Megan is a hardworking and willing to learn type player. She was at every off-season workout and gave 100% when she could. Megan has a 3.1 GPA and manages to play basketball, participates in musicals, manages to play in the band, and Somerville High School is lucky to have her. We wish you the best of luck with your college pursuits. <laughs> Last and certainly not least, I saved this one on purpose. She's played for me for three years. She was sidelined this year with a torn ACL. When I saw the injury happen, it brought me to tears. Literally, I cried. As a coach for 20 plus years, you know what that looks like. Is it her ACL or is it her MCL? I knew what it meant for our team as well. I knew what it meant to her and I knew what it meant to her family. She was named captain last year when we were beat by Danvers in the tournament. She's probably one of the best athletes here at Somerville High School. She is stubborn and a pain in her parents' butt, as well as mine. I wouldn't want it any other way. We coined the name for her TC when she played eighth grade Yes, you heard that correctly. In eighth grade, she played here at Somerville High School. You know what's important, Taylor. We will miss you. And if your parents need me to drag you to college, I will. Congratulations, all seniors. All right, let's get this game started. Wait. Time out, sorry. With <laughs> I'm so sorry, because this season could have never happened without two women, you know, because behind every good woman, there's another woman and another woman, just so you know, guys. And uh, I, I must thank my assistant coaches, uh, Michelle Haggerty. Michelle actually is a former Somerville Highlander and played for the Pride, so watch, girls. You can always come back. And our newest addition, Jennifer Adams LeBlanc. I couldn't have done it without you two. The rides home and, and asking, did we do it right? I, I couldn't have done it without you. So now, let's get the game started. Thank you, Maria, for the flowers. And the athletic trainer, Michelle Kelly. Everybody give a round of applause for her.
Welcome to Somerville Highlander Basketball on Somerville Educational Channel 15. It is senior night here at Brune Field House as the Lady Highlanders look to close out their 2018-2019 season as they face off against the Salem Witches. I'm Todd Harmon, joined by Jack Conley once again. And, and Jack, this is a rematch along with being senior night as these two teams battled once already this season at the Holiday uh, Classic, the, ho the ho Holiday Hoop Fest in the first round. It was a Somerville loss, 39-32. But this is a very different Somerville team that we have now that's going to go up against these witches. Yeah, it certainly is, and in that contest, we saw a little apprehension from some of our underclassmen. Elizabeth McEwen uh, has, uh, has really uh, come on. So Jill Hutchinson is getting a lot more confidence. So we have to be very optimistic. There's a bright future ahead for those young sophomores. But there was quite a spell that the witches cast on the Sumble team back then. We're going to see if we can make that up tonight. Absolutely. And talking to Sheila Freitas Haley, the head coach for the Highlanders, she did talk about exactly that, that this is a very different team. This team has developed. They've matured over the season, and, you know, the future is very, very bright from what we've seen, the development from the day one, game one, all the way to tonight. But, of course, it's also about the seniors tonight. We have uh, five senior starters going for the Highlanders as Caitlin Seely will be in the starting lineup, Pierre Pontes as well, Carla Flores, uh, Gurpri Carr, as well as Megan Barnes. They will be the starting lineup. Those are the five playing seniors for the Highlanders. Another Good senior evening, on the team, but unfortunately out with injury, Taylor Casey, as she has the torn ACL. So she was also celebrated in the preseason. We have the opening, uh, the opening announcements in the lineup, as well as our national anthem. You want to respect the student-athletes? Show you our role model on the court and in the stands, using only positive language and gestures, removing your hat, remain standing for the entire national anthem, and entering and exiting the area safely. Not doing your part to assure some of the athletic events are safe and positive will result in being told to leave and being banned from local sporting events. And now the starting lineup for the Salem for Salem High School. Number four, Tiara Griffin. Number 11, Stephanie Cantone. Number 13, Anna Cantone. Number 33, Cassidy O'Leary. And number 35, Hennessy Beltray. And now the start lineup for your Somerville Highlanders. Number 11, Kirtry Carr. Number 15, Caitlin Seely. Number 21, Carla Salamanca Flores. Number 25, Megan Barnes. And number 32, Kiara Pontes. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we ask you to please rise and remove your hats to the playing of our national anthem.
I just noticed the jerseys hung up on the wall. So we will close out the 2018-2019 season tonight. Somerville coming in tonight with a record of 2-13 and 13 on the season. Salem coming in with a record of 3-13 and 13 on the season. So some relatively evenly matched teams here. You know, it was only a 7-point win for Salem when they were here last at Broom Fieldhouse during the holiday tournament. So a good opportunity for this Highlander squad to get a fin good finish to the, uh, to the season and uh, look towards next year with a positive aspect. And I, I think, Todd, this is a really uh, emotional night for uh, the Somerville High seniors being their, uh, their last contest. Unfortunately, there's not going to be a tournament appearance this year, but it's also given an opportunity for some of the underclassmen who've been mentored by uh, these seniors over the course of the season. And I know we're going to get an opportunity to see over the course of tonight's game how uh, the sophomores, Jill Hutchinson uh, and Elizabeth McEwen, have uh, developed over the course of the year. And of course, we're going to see Jamima and uh, Joseph back next year uh, to provide, again, some senior leadership as she rises next year. Absolutely, no question about that. We've watched this team develop. They've struggled at times this year to find their identity, but uh, I think they really have begun to come together. And uh, and as as Coach uh, Fritas Haley said, it's a completely different team than faced Salem earlier this season. So Megan Barnes will take the tip for the Highlanders. That's mm. one away by Salem. As they will control the opening tip. Jumper put up immediately by Cantone. That's Anna Cantone. That was no good. Highlanders back the other direction. It's the five seniors working around the perimeter. Kaylin Seeley into the, into the paint. Her shot is up. It's no good. Rebounded by Beltre. The witches. Going against the zone defense put forth by Somerville. Mm. It's going to be a three-second violation as Hennessy Beltre called for that one. I think actually that was Tony DeFry, the referee, had a travel call on that one. They're a little bit outside the paint, but we've got two veteran officials here tonight. Uh, to, uh, Tony DeFry, who originally hailed from Somerville, and um, uh, Karina Wilikowski is uh, handling the duties as one of the other officials tonight. The Highlanders work it around. Salmonca Flores has it, kicks it out. The free car. Over to Caitlin Seeley. Shot clock down to six. There's Gurpreet Carr. She'll get called for the travel there. She took a stutter step before that pass. Salem gets the ball on the turnover. Cantone running the point for the Witches. As she puts up the jumper, it's short, no good. Megan Barnes fighting for the rebound. The free car comes away with it. And almost gets it stolen away by Cantone. That was Anna Cantone, but out of bounds. Off of the Witches, it'll go to the Islanders. As Gurpreet will inbounds directly to our right. Kaylin Seeley running the point for the seniors. Salamanca Flores with it now over to Seeley on the right wing. Okay. Seeley will drive into the paint. Her shot is up. It's no good. And fighting for the rebound was Pontes, but knocked out of bounds off of her, so it will go to the Witches. Long shot put up from the corner by the Witches. No good as Cantone missed that one. Islander ball back the other direction off the rebound. Seeley looking for some help. She gets it. Flores feeds it back to Seeley. Back over to Salamanca Flores. And she gets her pass picked off by Stephanie Cantone. Cantone's shot is up, it's no good. 
Saved from going out of bounds, though. Shot put up by the Witches. No good once again. Anna Cantone's putback attempt. No good. And the foul is called against Cantone. Single foul number 13, Anna Cantone. That's Cantone's first personal foul. First team foul on the Witches. Mm. by Salem. As Megan Barnes gets it at the foul line. She drives into the paint, loses control, and we'll have a jump ball situation on the alternating possession. The Highlanders will maintain possession. So Gurpreet Carr will inbounds this one. Kaylin Seeley with the runner attempt, no good. Tennessee Beltre came away with that one. Long pass down court, shot is up, it's no good, but she was fouled. As Tiara Griffin will go to the line, shooting two. Foul goes against Gurpreet Carr. Some of a foul number 11, Gurpreet Carr. Griffin's first free throw is up. It's no good. And here we have wholesale changes for the Highlanders. So Elizabeth McEwen checks in, along with Jamima Joseph. Jill Hutchinson. Jill Hutchinson also, yeah. Second shot put up by Griffin. No good. There's Bridget Fraser pulling down the rebound. Frazier will run the point now. Actually, I should say, Jill Hutchinson will be running the point. There's Jamima Joseph with the outside shot. No good by Jamima. Shot put up by the Witches. No good. Cantone knifes in, gets the rebound. The putback attempt is no good. She tries it again. No good. Bridget Frazier gets the rebound and gets it knocked out of her hands, out of bounds. Off of Bridget, I believe, though. Yeah, it's bouncing off a foot, I think, on that one, Todd. But uh, Bridget is right away, two rebounds right away in there of 30 seconds. Worked both ends of the floor very well, as we've seen through the year. Cantones inbounds it to Griffin. Her shot is up. It's no good. Rebound pulled away by the Highlanders. No score. 4.15 remaining in the first quarter as they feed it down to Jamima Joseph. Look at that. Jamima Joseph making her presence felt already in transition. Great job running the floor, gets the pass, makes the bucket. She's at the line for three. And put that Same shot up nice and soft Cassidy off the glass, even though she was fouled on the way up. There's some experience showing right there as she went right to the basket. It's good to have Jamima back out on the floor. Missed most of the season. One of the better players for Somerville. Great low post presence as well. As the free throw is up and it is good. Smooth as silk on that free throw. 3-0 lead now for the Islanders. And I think she and um, Bridget Frazier are going to make a big difference rebound-wise now that they're in their contest right now, Todd. Switch to a man-to-man -man as well for the Islanders. Backdoor look there. Jamila Joseph gets the block as she closed out nicely on that, but... Rigo able to put Rigo that one up. Two. Four, two. Back down the other direction very quickly. Jamima Joseph drives in, makes the bucket, going to the line, looking for the old school three-point play. And Todd, uh, she finished on the right side of the basket that time. Just 30 seconds ago is from the other side, so she's showing her Single foul number 13, Anna Cantone. Cantone gets that foul. That's her second personal foul. Second team foul on the Witches. The free throw, no good by Joseph. Rebound fought for by Frazier, but knocked out of bounds off of Bridget Frazier, so the Witches will have it. Islanders with the 5-2 to two lead. 3.40 remaining in the first quarter. Joseph out defensively doing a nice job as well. Shot is up. It's no good. Rebound pulled down by the Highlanders. 
as Kaylin Seeley came away with that one. Velasquez with it now from the right wing. Her shot is up. It's no good. Rebound pulled away by the Witches. As that would be Dominguez with that one. Kaylin Seeley, nice job defensively right in the grill. So working around the perimeter, trying to find the soft spot. Three-pointer put up, no good. Trying to save it from out of bounds. Saves it to the Highlanders, though. It's Jill Hutchinson with it. She drives into the paint. Her runner is up and good. The Being in the season, Todd, she wouldn't have tried to attempt that shot. Pull out a lot more confidence than seen through the season and put up that little floater that was good. Good active hands there by Hutchinson as she knocks that pass out of bounds. Caitlin Seeley taking a seat. One of the seniors on the squad for the Highlanders. Elizabeth McEwen checks in. The Witches trying to get past this defense of the Highlanders. A great job mm -hmm. there. Good active hands as Velasquez is able to get the get the ball away from Griffin, then Griffin got the foul as she was trying to get it back. Yeah, we got timeout now, Todd, because the Salem coach, I think, is a little concerned that they're off to a slow start, and it appears that Sumble has a lot more energy. Trying to slow Sumble down a little bit uh, and see if they can regroup. And certainly they've got um, a little bit of help under the boards, but it uh, looks like all they've done is look for outside shots the only inside shots for Salem so far, Todd, have come from missed uh, offensive shots. So I'm sure we're going to try and see a little bit more work in getting the ball in the paint. The easier shots are the one closest to the basket, obviously. You can really see the difference in the Highlanders. You know, the, the, the seniors came out, they were the starters, but this is a young squad. This is, this is a squad that's been learning on the fly throughout the season. But now one of their better players, Jamima Joseph, we've already seen her impact tonight. And the development of these younger players, as you pointed out, Jill Hutchinson would not have probably tried that runner, that little soft runner she had in the paint earlier this season. So the development of this team, it's, it is a truly different team than Salem faced earlier at the holiday tournament. And Jill here has done a nice job in picking up the pace. When they have the chance to run, they've been a lot more aggressive doing so, Todd. It's Velasquez's three-pointer from the right wing, no good. Tries to follow it up and get the rebound, but it's pulled away by Dominguez. She did follow a shot, though, Todd, which is very worthwhile to see. Two minutes remaining here in the quarter. Highlanders leading by five. Dominguez's baseline jumper, no good. Rebound by McEwen. Kicks it back to Hutchinson. Hutchinson feeds it to Jamima Joseph. Joseph, with the drive, goes up, no good. Rebound pulled away by the Witches. Good active hands by Jamima Joseph, almost stealing that one away. Cantone feeds it up to the top of the key. Rigo has it there, shot put up by Griffin from the left wing, no good, still taking those outside shots, not finding anything there. There's Bridget Frazier with it. We have a stoppage on the floor as a timeout is called. And Bridget Frazier, uh, Todd, is making a presence well known, even though she isn't scored points. He's already Time got out, four summer. rebounds, three of them off uh, defensive rebounds, one offensive. She's making quite a case for herself as an all-around player. As you can see, she handles the ball very well after rebounding. She looks up the floor, and if nobody's there, she puts it down and goes. And got her eyes up, great ball handler, and very aggressive on the rebound. It's that, that core group, that they're sophomores right now. You've got Jill, Jill Hutchinson, Bridget Frazier, Jada West as well. Um, um, Elizabeth let's see here, Elizabeth McEwen, McEwen, McEwen also, and uh, Lauren Perena. They've been playing together since they were in seventh grade. So, you know, they've been playing together for three or four years. That, so they've grown together, and we've just watched them grow even more and more throughout this season as well. And that's the Somerville Pride program. Many of those Summerville Pride uh, players now in the fourth, fifth, sixth grade were here 
during the national anthem because Coach Bradis Haley is smart enough to realize bring the kids up here, give them a little exposure for what could be setting an example. Absolutely, no question about it. It's Jada West in the game now, speaking of those sophomores. There's McEwen with the three-point attempt from the right wing. No good. Joseph with the putback attempt. No good. No good on her oh. second putback attempt as well. Looked like a lid was on the basket that time as it rolled all around, but did not go down. 50 seconds left in the quarter. Highlanders with a five-point lead. Salem working around the perimeter, and there's Jill Hutchinson right in the passing lane. She steals it away. She goes in looking for the bunny, but she misses it. Back the other direction are the Witches. Islanders in defensive position. She had to think a little bit too much on that one, I think, Todd. I think she was surprised she had such a yeah. wide open and easy uh, attempt there. Cantone feeds it off to Rago. Over to Cantone from the left wing. Her shot is Cantone up and it's good. And Stephanie Cantone made that one. And Joseph's going to get called for the travel. She wasn't expecting that pass. Was a little surprised by it. Took a stutter step. Seven seconds remaining here in the quarter. Highlanders leading by three. Another active hand situation. Hutchinson tipped it, and Jada West intercepted it. And a travel is going to get called as West took too many steps trying the half-court shot. A little early on that shot. There was actually uh, four seconds remaining. I think that's a, a, a rookie mistake in many respects because one or two seconds is quite a bit of time and you can move quite a bit to get closer to the basket. So it inbounds with 4.1 seconds left in the quarter. Islanders leading by three. The Witches have the ball. So they get it down looking to... Hennessy, her shot is up. It's no good as Beltre could not put that one home. And that will do it for the first, first quarter, quarter of the play as the Islanders seven, lead seven, after four. the first quarter, seven to four. Good quarter of basketball there for the Highlanders. The seniors got the start, and then the younger players came in and really started to uh, effectively do a great job. You see Jamima Joseph right there as she had two opportunities in three-point plays. And she was fouled on both those shots that she made. So a great quarter there for Jamima Joseph. And Todd, the other thing that is uh, very noticeable is that the uh, Few turnovers. Unfortunately, during the season, we've seen the uh, Highlanders plagued by sometimes more turnovers than points in some quarters. In this case, unofficially, I've only got uh, three turnovers for the Lady Highlanders. And uh, Salem is also having a little bit of problem handling the ball as well. But uh, the 7 4 lead is uh, it's nice to see. And now we have uh, the, a couple more substitutions. I see here now the Dulles. Tara Malati is in the game right now, kind of going in for Bridget Fraser. And we've got uh, Caitlin Seeley back in the game. Caitlin, uh, you can notice, is wearing a face mask here, obviously, to protect her, her nose and cheekbones, which uh, yeah. is up in an injury, I believe, to caught an elbow in practice. But certainly isn't uh, holding her back. She's gone inside a couple of times tonight, going to the basket, and, and very tenacious. begin the second quarter with the Highlanders leading seven to four. So they try to work the ball into the low, low block like you were talking about, Jack, try to get the ball to the interior. Good job by the Highlanders defensively, positionally, and she couldn't quite handle that pass, though, as Beltre let that one go off of her hands out of bounds. And Selena Scott's in the game right now, too, Todd, and that, uh, she's got some pretty good quickness. So I'll be surprised to see if the Highlanders run the ball quite a bit. As Chia Velotti's got it. She tries to feed it up to Jamima Joseph at the foul line. The kick is called. So they will reset the shot clock. Joseph will inbounds this one to the right of the basket. Right back to Jamima as she tries to fade away. No good. Rebound pulled down by Beltre. Griffin with the runner from the right side, and it is Griffin good. For two. She kissed that one right off the glass. One point lead now for the Highlanders as Hutchinson has it. 
She drives, puts up the jumper, shot is short. Which has come away with the rebound. Cantone feeds over to Cantone. The Cantone sisters, number 13 and number 11. Beltre now has it on the baseline. The weak side shot, no good, but the putback is up and good by Cantone. That was Stephanie Cantone. Jamima Joseph quickly back the other direction, just puts it right up and in. Great job by Jamima Joseph as she had to adjust that shot as she went up for it. Anna Cantone with it now, feeds it over to Griffin. Griffin all alone is going to dribble into the paint and put it up and in. A little defensive lapse there, Todd. Uh, that lane was left wide open, and wisely Griffin went right to the basket. Which is now with a one-point lead, 10-9. to nine. Seely has that one stolen away. Griffin with it a little bit behind the back. She puts up the shot, no good. Cantone gets the rebound, puts it up, no good as well as Anna couldn't put that one home. Jerry Velotti comes away with the rebound, and Hutchinson now has it. Jill will feed it out to Jamima Joseph on the left wing. Back over to Hutchinson. And Caitlin Seely with the shot, no good. Salem's collapsing back in the zone now, letting the outside shot go. Another turnover as they feed it forward. As Silena Scott puts it up, no good. She gets her own rebound, puts it back up, and she's fouled that time. She'll go to the line shooting two. Just like Jill Hutchinson on the on the all alone play, just had to think a little bit too much Salem's about going there instead of just 17, going up and putting the shot up. Classic line from the movie Bull Durham, don't think you'll only hurt the ball club. <laughs> Selena's first shot, no good. As Elizabeth, or, I'm sorry, Bridget Fraser actually checking into the game for the Highlanders. Second shot by Selena. No good. Jamima Joseph, though, with the rebound. No good. Nice job by Selena Scott as she got in there and was able to get a hand on that rebound. And on the alternating possession, the Highlanders will maintain. Nevea Sanchez checks into the game for the Highlanders. Number five gets the inbounds. Feeds it over to Jamima Joseph. The interior to Frazier. Frazier's shot is up. It's no good. I think the witches are putting a spell on that rim tonight, Todd, I'm afraid. Five minutes remaining in the half. Islanders trailing by one. The witches have it. Working against that man-to-man -man defense. Weak side rebound pulled down by Frazier. Frazier has it on the right wing, feeds it to Sanchez. Sanchez off of the give and go, misses it. Another short shot, another miss there. I think he might be right about uh, some sort of hex going on from the Witches. Well, we're gonna be looking for that magic potion to see if we can get that undone, I think. Cantone steps on the end line. She put that one on the ground, trying to make a baseline drive. Oh, no, they're gonna call the... Called the foul, actually. Somerville foul number three, Jamima Joseph. Oh, Got Jamima yeah. on the foul there. That's Jamima's first, second team foul against the Highlanders. As the inbounds comes in to Dominguez and she Dominguez, puts it up and two. in. Three point lead now for the Witches. Hutchinson almost gets her pocket picked. Instead, tries to feed a bounce pass into. Sanchez out of bounds off of the Highlanders. And Bridget Frazier was lucky she didn't get a foul call. There was quite a bit of contact. Uh, I think it was probably just a little bit out of the eye of the referee, so she was fortunate she didn't pick up a foul. The witch is working it around the perimeter. Griffin has it. She'll put it up from there, and she does. It's no good. Rebound, long rebound taken by the Witches. As Cantone puts that one up, 
No good. Rebound fought for. Hutchinson comes away with it. Hutchinson always looking to push the tempo. Frazier has it at the top of the key, feeds it over to Velasquez. Her shot is up. It's no good. Dribble penetration that time by Rigo. Kicks it back out. Griffin with the shot, no good. Dominguez with the rebound, kicks it out to Rigo. They try to feed it back to the interior. Griffin comes away with it, drives into the paint, and she's fouled there by Bridget Frazier. Somebody will foul number 24, Bridget Frazier. Griffin will go to the line for two. She's 0 for 2 from the line so far tonight. Shot by Griffin is up and it's good. Second shot by Griffin is no good. Lane violation is called. Would have been wiped away if she had made it. Islanders trailing by four now. 3-10 remaining in the first half. Frazier with the skip pass to the corner. Velasquez tried to get it to Hutchinson, stolen away by Griffin. Griffin having some trouble holding on to the ball there. Gets called for the Maybe travel as she, she went down to the ground. She made a nice move here, trying to maintain she kept the, the ball in play. Some people might think that might have been a travel, but she was, clearly couldn't control the ball. No. Frazier with the penetration into the paint. She gets fouled. God, Highland is clearly having trouble getting inside. Same with foul number 14, Angelica Rigo. Rigo gets called for that foul. That's her first. That's the sixth team foul against the Witches. It's Frazier inbounds, gets it to Jamima Joseph. Her shot is up. It's no good. Rebound pulled away by the Witches. Beltre, just very a very large presence. Having you have uh, Jamima's having to adjust her shot as she makes the block right there. Back inside, looking to Beltre. They'll kick it back out. Rigo with it now. Over to the right wing. Griffin working there against Hutchinson. They so work it around the perimeter. Rigo takes the three, and that is good. We go for three. Seven point lead now for the Witches. 2.05 remaining in the first half. Islanders offense really stalling here as the shot is put up from the left corner. That is no good. That was Elizabeth McEwen. Hutchinson's shot is no good as well. She tips it out to Frazier on the rebound. Shot this time once again by McEwen. No good. Rebound kicked back to McEwen. Her bunny is no good. Frazier thinks about a three. Instead, gets it inside to Joseph. Jamima Joseph, her shot is no good. And foul is called. Jamima got her own rebound, went back up, and she was fouled on her way back up. So she will go to the line for two. Single foul number 24, Deborah Dominguez. Dominguez gets called for that foul. That's her first, the seventh team foul against the Witches. Joseph's free throw is no good. Highlander is now in the bonus for the last minute 34. As you can see Jamima getting her own rebound right there and then fouled right there by Dominguez on the arm. Second shot by Joseph, no good. And Todd, that spell seems to be working. We get two points in this period so far. The witch is working it. Rigo with the shot. It's good. Rigo for two. Richard Frazier back quickly the other direction. Drives into the paint. Her shot is up. It's no good. Rebound pulled away by the witches.
Chin and working it around the perimeter. Cantor looking for his Canto, looking for some help. Gets it from her sister, Anna. Anna's shot is up. It's no good. Frazier, good position there, able to pull away the rebound. So they get it over, kicking it to McEwen from the left wing. Her shot is up. It's no good. 35 seconds now remaining in the half. Highlanders trailing by nine. So they get it inside to Beltre at the foul line. Kicks it back out to Cantone. Stephanie's shot is no good. Sister Anna was looking for the weak side rebound. It goes out of bounds off of Anna Cantone. 23 seconds remaining here in the first half. As you pointed out, Jack, the Highlanders have only scored two points here in this second half, or second period, I should say. And this should be a, a play designed to get inside and hopefully pick up a basket, go in the locker room with a little bit of confidence. That zone defense packed in tightly as the skip pass was attempted by Frazier over to McEwen, out of bounds, off target, 12.4 remaining in the half. Salem looking for the last shot. They get it to Beltre. Jamima Joseph, good quick hands as she steals that one away. The mid-court shot by Jamima, too strong. And that will do it for the first half of the play. The Highlanders trail 18 to 9. Outscored in the second half, or second quarter, I should say. Greatly there were the Highlanders. So a little difficulty there in the second quarter as we move towards halftime. The Highlanders trailing by nine, 18 to nine. You are watching Somerville Highlander Basketball on Somerville Educational Channel 15. We are back at Broon Field House as we begin a second half action. The Salem Witches versus the Somerville Highlanders. Salem leading this one by a score of 18 to 9. Somerville had the, the, the four point lead at the beginning or at the end of the second quarter, or at the end of the first quarter, I should mm -hmm. say, Jack. Sorry about that. And, you know, things were looking good, but they just can't seem to make any baskets. We have seen so many. What would look like the easy shots just roll around the rim. Miss Jamima Joseph has been really frustrated. A couple of what should have been easy layups on breakaways weren't made. And as a result, that lead has dropped off. Thankfully, with the three-part shot available, uh, a lead like nine points, can it's only a, a three-possession game. But the key is Salem has been just blocked, stepping back in the paint. Sure, you want to put up from outside, some will go ahead. It hasn't worked the second period. They may just collapse back into that zone and dare the Lady Highlanders to put it up from 15 feet or deep in the corner. The key for some will be getting back inside, trying to get the easier shot, maybe get foul, go to the line, but make the clock work for us, not against us. Absolutely, no doubt about that. As we open out the second half of action, Salem with the balls, the inbound directly in front of us. As Cantone has it, Stephanie Cantone, number 11 there. Her sister, 13, is Anna Cantone. Beltre has it, defended by Joseph. Great job by Jamima Joseph, using those quick hands. She goes in, gets the contact, and makes the bucket. Really good play there by Jamima Terrific Joseph. Terrific play as she knocked the ball away, went up the floor, straight down the floor, got under the basket, went up, got fouled for the third Table time tonight. Three, to the line leader. after being fouled. That's a second foul against O'Leary as Joseph misses the free throw. Jamima, unfortunately, one for six from the line right now, or one for five from the line. Antone gives it off to O'Leary. O'Leary defended by Caitlin Seeley. 
Cantone with it again, defended by Hutchinson. As they try to get O'Leary cutting towards the basket, it goes out of bounds off of O'Leary. Turnover will go to Somerville. Seven point lead right now for the Witches. Dominguez checks back into the game for Salem. Beltre takes a seat on the bench. Bridger Frazier driving that one into the paint, immediately trying to make something happen on the offensive end. Gets her own rebound, kicks it back out. Hutchinson has it there. Hutchinson puts up the shot. Her shot is no good. Rebound fought for. Jamima Joseph comes up with it, puts the shot up, and she's fouled. Another excellent effort by the Highlanders on the misses. Ball didn't go in, so but the Highlanders the 13, were right there to pick up the rebound, keep the ball in play. Jamima ended up with another good opportunity. Clock stop, we get a chance to add some points, get back in the contest. Here we go, looking at it here, Todd. We just see Jamima going back up after getting that rebound. She puts that one in. First free throw is made here. Second shot by Jamima, rolls around, no good. Six point lead now for Salem. Dominguez has it on the right block. Her shot is up, no good. And Selena Scott comes away with it, gives it off to Hutchinson. Hutchinson now with it, forcing the tempo. Try, thought about penetration, instead brought it back. Frazier saves it from going over the half court line. Jamima Joseph gets it. Her shot is up, it's no good, or it is good, but the foul was called on the floor previous to her taking Salem the shot. number 24, Deborah Dominguez. Dominguez's second personal foul, third team foul on the Witches here in the second half. Frazier will inbounds, gets it to Caitlin Seely, kicks it out to Joseph. Jamima Joseph shot no good from the baseline. Good job by Caitlin Seely. She ran that one down, gave it off to Hutchinson. Hutchinson's two pointer is good. Jill wouldn't have taken that shot early on in the year, Todd. Dominguez with an up and under. Dominguez puts that one in. Jill Hutchinson with a runner from the right-hand side of the lane. No good, but there's Bridget Frazier's knifing in there to get the rebound. Gives it off to Joseph. Selena Scott now from the right wing. Her shot is up. It's no good. Foul is called, though, as she got... She got fouled on the three-point shot, so Selena Same Scott will go to the Dominguez. line for three free throws. Dominguez gets called for her third personal foul, so some foul trouble developing for the Witches, as they also have four team fouls against them here in the second half. Scott's first free throw is up. No good. Um, a little too heavy on that shot. A little more arc and fall through might help out, but... Now, these are important to make these. The clock is stopped. We can add to the total to get closer. Scott's second shot is up. That one rolls home. Nice soft shot. Off the rim and off, hit the backboard and in. Five point lead now for Salem. Selena, one for four from the line so far on the night. That one, no good. Islanders leading by five as Salem has the ball. It's Cantone defended by Hutchinson. The Islanders have really upped their defensive pressure, it appears. As Bridget Fraser able to steal that one away. Trying to feed it forward to Hutchinson. A little too far. She had to save it in, back to the inbounds. Salem comes away with it. Cantone looking for some help. Instead, she'll take the shot as she was left wide open, and she makes it. Oh, Bridget Frazier and Rhea Miskew walked away from the Salem player. And oh, there we go. Yeah, oh, there we go. Scott Outside shot two. put up by Selena Scott. That's a two-pointer, and it's good. Timeout on Time the out floor, Salem. taken by Salem. 4.57 remaining in the third quarter. The Islanders have cut it to a five-point lead after trailing by nine at the half. And Todd, um, 
the opportunities are a little more abundant here now. Very aggressive at the, on the offensive board when there's a miss. There's three bodies looking for rebound. Jamima Joseph is uh, really showing her versatility under the basket. The key to the Highlanders' success tonight, Todd, is the ball has to come inside, let Jamima do her work. Bridget Fraser is just showing her versatility. I'd like to see her go in the basket, trying to uh, get inside. Jill Hutchinson's been able to uh, quarterback the team pretty well. I'm optimistic the Highlanders with some aggressive defense can knock the score down. Be nice to come out of this pit. We still get five minutes left to come back and be pretty close to even here now. The defense has really been uh, very good here in this period. No doubt about it. The defensive aggressiveness has really increased for the Highlanders. Another point, the foul trouble that's developing for the Witches. 14 fouls already, and there's five minutes remaining in the third quarter. So there's going to be some opportunity for the Highlanders at the foul line. Now, the unfortunate part about that is they're struggling right now from the foul line as uh, as uh, Selena Scott is only one for five from the foul line and Jamima only two for seven from the foul line. So the, some good opportunities there for the Highlanders if they can take them. As a carrier travel is going to be called right there. And I'm looking to see the ball go inside to exploit that and hopefully can warm up on the free throw line, Todd. Frazier feeds it inside, kicks it back out to Hutchinson. Hutchinson's shot is up, it's no good. Rolled around, did not go home. Rigo came away with the rebound. Stephanie Cantone with it. Feeds O'Leary. O'Leary tries to give it back to Cantone. A little behind her goes out of bounds. And Jamima Joseph Todd doing a good job on Anna Cantone, uh, number 13, who has not been as much of a presence this period. And as a result, the Highlanders been able to exploit the inside game. I'm looking forward to seeing some more inside penetration. Coach Haley realizes it's still a very close contest. Selena Scott with a shot from the right corner. The three-pointer is no good. Stephanie Cantone with it, running the point for the Witches. Four minutes remaining in the third quarter. Islanders trailing by five. <clears throat> As there's Anna Cantone. Good active hands by Jamima Joseph. She's already dribbled. She can't dribble again. Rigu, defended by Caitlin Seeley. And there's that great defense that you were talking about. Jamima Joseph nullifying, basically, Anna Cantone. As Selena Scott... Tried to save that one, ended up hopping on one foot, gets called for the travel. That play was responsible thanks to Jamima Joseph's very aggressive uh, defense, allowing for the ball to come up. Selena was just a little bit too much of a hurry. Still that five point lead for the Witches. As Dominguez has it, she puts it on the floor. She gets the foul called, as that will go against Bridget Frazier. That's going to be Frazier's second personal foul, the first team foul for the Highlanders here in the second half. And there's Jennifer Velasquez along with Elizabeth McEwen checking into the game. Frazier and Caitlin Seeley taking a seat. Hutchinson got a hold of that one with a hand, knocked it out of bounds. Cantone will try to rebound again, or inbound, I should say, again. Gets it to Dominguez on the left block. Shot is up, it's no good. Rebound fought for, Jamima Joseph comes away with it. She's got speed, she can handle the ball. She goes up, looking for the layup, no good. Selena Scott got the rebound. Elizabeth McEwen puts up the jumper from the outside, it's no good. And the Witches come away with the rebound. That one's going to go out of bounds off of Cantone. Stephanie Cantone couldn't quite handle the pass as it goes off her hands out of bounds. Good opportunity at Todd for the Highlanders to take advantage of these turnovers that have been um, happening. Uh, we've been talking about getting inside. Jamima Joseph has been playing quite a bit here in this period, uh, doing a nice job. I'd like to see her inside a little bit more. And that's going to be called against Rigo. Salem foul she is called for the block. That's her second 
the 15 foul against the Witches. A little switch up on that one as they had Hutchinson down in the in the uh, running the baseline and Jamima Joseph was running the point from the top of the key. Nevaeh Sanchez, who had just come into the game, gets that inbounds. And now Hutchinson back at the point. She kicks it out to Velasquez. Her shot is up. It's no good. Rebound chased down by Velasquez. She saved it out of bounds to McEwen, but it's stolen away by Griffin. Griffin dribbled into the paint, kicks it back out. Cantone with it now. She's defended out there by Joseph. They get it into Beltre. Her Beltre. shot is up Two. and is good. Two minutes remaining here in the third quarter as Jamima Joseph, the 12 footer, up no good. Salem back the other direction as Griffin puts up the shot. That one's no good. Rigu gets Rigo gets the rebound. And she is called. So the turnover goes to Somerville. Somerville trailing by seven, 24 to 17. They yeah. cut it to a five point lead, couldn't get any further thus far. And Todd, the three point shot, it's nice when it's going in, but when it's a miss, you come back to hurt you big time. It's Jamima Joseph. Gets the contact there from Beltre. Beltre was moving, so she gets called for the block. Salem foul number 35, Hennessy Beltre. That was on the floor. So the Highlanders will be inbounding. That was Hennessy's first personal foul. 16 foul now against Salem. Nice job there as Hutchinson using the space of the baseline, getting it over to Frazier, Frazier finishing. Good job there as West steals that one away. Feeds it forward. Hutchinson has it. She'll will wisely pull that back out. <coughs> Got a foul called that time against Jamima. Some of the foul is called Jamima Joseph. That's her second personal foul. Second team foul against the Highlanders. And I think Todd, it looks like the Honda in too much of a hurry to look for that three-point shot. There was quite a bit of time left on the clock when Velasquez put that last three-pointer up. They've not been successful outside. There's a nice play by Jill Hutchinson. Islanders extending their defensive pressure to the full court now with the man-to-man. -man. Cantone looking to inbounds. She can't run, she can't move, got to stay in the same location. Finds her sister, Anna, defended by Frazier. Gets it back over to Stephanie. Stephanie Cantone with it now. A minute remaining in the third quarter. It's Cantone down the left-hand side of the lane, and that's a double dribble. Almost lost it out of bounds, collected it, but then did, did stop her dribble when she did that. Thus, the double dribble was called. Hutchinson with it now. Feeds it over to Jada West. Jada's shot is up. It's no good. Look at Frazier fighting for that rebound, and she is able to make things happen and get a foul called against Salem. Oh, Bridget Frazier's my MVP this season so far, Todd. She just showed how versatile a player she is. Two foul number 24, no foul Deborah with the ball, on the um, offensive class was able to pick up that rebound, keep the ball under control with 35 seconds left. She's at the free throw line now. Dominguez called for that foul. That was her fourth personal foul. First shot, no good. Great job, Jill Hutchinson. She's able to knock that one to herself. Feeds it forward to Frazier. Frazier kicks it back to Hutchinson. They'll set the offense. Jada West with it in the left corner. She's defended there by Rigo. And she's called for the carry. Turnover there. It's 14 seconds remaining in the quarter. Pass was looking for O'Leary. 
could not find her, goes out of bounds, and the Highlanders will get it with 9.6 seconds remaining in the quarter. Highlanders trailing by five, looking to uh, cut into that five-point lead. Plenty of time here, Todd. You don't have to be in a huge hurry, but to get the ball up over midcourt. And they're going to call that carrying the ball. Coach Friedas Haley not happy. Wants I'm an explanation. I'm a little confused on that one myself, Todd. It uh, uh, looks like she was allowing the ball to roll up the floor. The clock doesn't start until the ball is touched. It was picked up. And I'm not sure what the call was. But it's Salem ball. Yep, Salem ball. 8.6 seconds remaining in the quarter. Now foul is going to be called against the Highlanders, it looks like. Jada West is going to get called. She was battling with Beltre. Right. Some of the foul number 30, Jada West. So West gets called for her pers first personal foul. 13 foul against the Highlanders. Go, 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 Go. That one's stolen away. They feed it forward to Velasquez. Her shot is up no good with two seconds left on the clock. So Salem maintains the five-point lead after three quarters of play. 24 to 19 is the Salem lead. Islanders able to cut into that lead from half, but uh, still uh, some difficulties out there. We did start to see a lot more light in the offensive game. David Joseph and Bridget Frazier helped in a big way to make sure to get the ball inside. Jamima Joseph really showing her offensive versatility under the basket. I hope she can stay under there because that's going to be the key to success here as we get into the fourth period. Getting inside, getting a high percentage shot, perhaps picking up a foul, and as you pointed out, Todd, making free throws is going to be critical as we get down the, uh, to the end of the period. It's only a five-point game. Very uh, good opportunity to get back into it. No doubt about it, a five-point lead for Salem. The Highlanders can make up those five points. There's no question about it as we enter into the fourth quarter of play. The Highlanders on the floor right now, Janima Joseph, Bridget Frazier, Kayla, or Caitlin Seeley, I should say, uh, Jill Hutchinson, and uh, Selena Scott as well. Another big opportunity right now. The Highlanders only have three fouls. The Salem Witches have we're in the bonus in three more, and we'll be in the double bonus. So a lot going in the high school's favor. Yeah, a good opportunity for the Highlanders to score without the clock running, because they'll be able to go to the line. As Rigo gets the inbounds, defended by Caitlin Seeley. Pushed off, but didn't get called. As Hennessy Beltre, no good there. And Todd, this is an opportunity uh, because Hennessy's not uh, very quick on the floor, so to be able to press the ball, move the ball, we'll be able to take advantage of the opportunity. Janima Joseph is in a great position, as we just saw. Joseph, take advantage of that. Hennessy's not going to come out to chase her. She'll leave her out there. Absolutely. And Janima Joseph, we got a uh, foul called, it looks like, a push off. So Kaylin Seeley is going to go to the line. I believe that call was against Rigo. That has been brewing. Angelica Rigo and Kaitlyn Seeley have been battling, so to speak. So a little extracurricular there. Kaitlyn at the line for one and one. First shot by Kaitlyn, no good. And Beltre gets the rebound. Antone tries to get it to Rigo. Hutchinson able to come away with it. Feeds it over to the weak side. The shot by Frazier, no good. Down on the floor, Caitlin Seeley able to save that one. Frazier with a three-pointer, no good. Jill Hutchinson with the putback, no good. Cannot believe it to Jill Hutchinson. Jill's wondering, how did I miss that one? Three-point lead for the Witches. We have a timeout on the floor. Salem Time calls Salem. timeout. There's a good opportunity here now, Todd. Coach Freitas Haley is certainly going to try and set everybody down. 
Some of those misses are unfortunate, but frustration uh, can only last for so long. Just get the ball back in, in play, come back and do it again. Leeds already down to three points. We're gonna be in the bonus on the next two fouls. Long way to go yet. Being in that bonus could be a big help. Absolutely, no question about it. The double bonus would really, really be helpful. <clears throat> of course, Islanders trailing by three. They've struggled tonight from the line, unfortunately. They've only made, uh, let's see here, two free throws. They've made two, I believe, as a team. As I'm counting them up very quickly. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. They have made two, uh, two, or actually three of 14 from the free throw line. So a definite area of improvement for the Highlanders there. And something that could be very valuable here as they are in the bonus. And those free throws are just so invaluable. Rebounds and free throws usually decide most high school games, Todd. You can certainly see why tonight. Stephanie Cantone inbounds it to Beltre, feeds it out to O'Leary. O'Leary feeds it back to Cantone. Cantone's shot is up, it's no good. Rebound being fought for, and Jamima Joseph comes away with it. She feeds it up to Caitlin Sheely. Caitlin goes up for the shot, and she is fouled. Mm -hmm. Who's that going to go against? If it goes against Rigo, that is her fourth. It will not go against Rigo, it goes against Six Griffin. Foul number four, Tiara Griffin. So Griffin gets her second personal foul. Nine team fouls now against Salem. Hmm. Shot by Caitlin. Good. It's a two-point Salem lead now. Caitlin looking to make it a one-point game with this free throw. Shot is good. 24-23 is your score. Highlanders trailing by one. Griffin has it, defended by Selena Scott. Cantone with it now, defended by Hutchinson. Hutchinson's going to get called for the reach-in. So Jill gets called for the reach-in. That's her first personal Jill foul. Hutchinson. Fourth team foul against the Highlanders. Cantone inbounding, tries to get it to Beltre, stolen away by Jamima Joseph. Joseph going into the paint, puts it up, and the Highlanders take the lead. 25 24 is your Highlander lead. Great job there, Selena Scott, as she's able to steal the ball away to Hutchinson. Hutchinson goes in for two. And a timeout is called. Timeout is called by Salem. Highlanders are electric as they have come back to take the lead. A three-point lead, 27 to 24. Great job by Jamima Joseph as she stole that ball to take the lead. And Todd, the uh, aggressiveness on defense is breaking the spell that the Witches had cast over the Highlanders. Very yeah, aggressive on defense, forcing the turnovers, getting the easy baskets underneath. Jill Hutchins and Jamima both went inside, laid the ball up. Here we are now with a three-point lead, moment to go. We were down five, now we're up three. And the next foul is gonna be the double bonus. Yep. So the Highlanders could take good advantage of that by continuing to go inside. The Highlanders coming out after the timeout. You saw. And this is probably one of the quicker lineups that Coach Freya Haley has. Well, when you look at it, there's five players right there, and every single one of those five players can handle the ball. And that's something that they've not been able to do throughout the season. You've got five strong ball handlers on the floor for the Highlanders. And Jameem is certainly going to take advantage of the matchup against Hennessy Beltre. A lot quicker moving up the floor. As Griffin has it, defended by Selena Scott. There's Jamima Joseph, the quick hands, the anticipation. She goes in, puts the shot up, and it's good. Joseph, the team. 29, 24. the team right on her back and bringing this comeback. Jamima Joseph going in on both ends offensively and defensively. It's Cantone. 
Dribbles it down, knocked out of bounds, off of Frazier, I believe. Bridget Frazier was the last to touch that one. Dominguez will check into the game. Now, she has four fouls, does number 24, Dominguez, for Salem. Cantone inbounds to her sister, Anna. And Anna Cantone puts it up and in. Three-point lead for the Highlanders, and they have the ball. 29-26 is the score. Hutchinson running the point. 5-20 remaining in the game. Skip pass over to Bridget Frazier. Gets it to the interior to Selena Scott. Back out to Frazier. Frazier drops it off to Scott. That shot was blocked by Cantone. Her sister Stephanie Cantone will square up, take the jumper. And that one bounces home. One point lead now for the Highlanders as Hutchinson goes into the paint. Her shot is up, it's no good. O'Leary gets the rebound. As the Witches now look to retake the lead. 4.45 remaining in the game. Highlanders have settled into a zone defense now. Dominguez feeds it into O'Leary. O'Leary's shot is blocked by Jamima Joseph. I think Jamima has about four or five blocks tonight. And she's done it at both ends of the floor, obviously, Todd, tonight. She put the Highlander on her back and said, let's go, let's win this game. Absolutely. A one point lead for the Highlanders as they have the ball. Frazier into the paint. Her shot is up, no good. There's Joseph. Her shot is up. And good, Joseph. Jamima Joseph with the offensive board and the putback. Hello, Jamima. Good to have you back. 4-10 remaining in the game. As Griffin kicks that one around, he kicks over to O'Leary. O'Leary with the shot, and a foul is going to be called. Joseph got ball, but she also got her a little bit with, on the arm, I believe. So that one will go against Some Jamima. Foul number three, Jamima Joseph. That's three personals against Jamima, five team fouls. You'll see right here. Yeah, she got her on the arm. O'Leary's first shot is up, and it's good. Second free throw here for O'Leary. Off the front rim, rebound by Joe Hutchinson. Hutchinson setting the offense, gets it to Frazier. Frazier drives into the paint. Her shot is up, and it's good. Bridget Frazier. That's the key nice. to the ball game right there, going inside, Todd. Nice runner in the interior. Highlander is doing exactly what you said they should do, Jack. They're driving it into the interior, putting up those shots. It's Griffin with it now. Feeds it off to Canto. Canto to the interior. That one's stolen away as well. Hutchinson with it. Racing with Cantone. The shot by Hutchinson, no good. Anna Cantone gets the rebound. They work it out to the corner. Griffin's shot is up. A two-pointer is good for Tiara Griffin. Griffin, an offensive leader for Salem when they got back, when they took the lead in the second quarter. As Jamima's runner is up and it's good, Jamima Joseph all over the place. Ten points here in the fourth quarter. As Dominguez goes into the paint, defended by Jamima Joseph. Another block for Jamima. Feeds it forward to Hutchinson. Hutchinson puts it up and in. Hutchinson. Scoring, passing, defense. He's doing it all tonight, Todd. No doubt about it. O'Leary has it, two and a half minutes remaining in the game. Dominguez, one-on-one -on -one with Jamima. She's gonna take her on, and that's no good. Hutchinson with the rebound. The Highlanders lead by six, 37 to 31, 220 remaining in the game. And Jill's taking a little bit of time now. The clock is her friend with the six-point lead to Time out, Somerville. Somerville going to take the timeout, figure out what they want to do over this last 2.13. The Highlanders really putting it together here in the fourth quarter on the back of Jamima Joseph. She's got 10 points, multiple steals, multiple blocks, and multiple assists as well here in the fourth quarter. And that play is infectious. The whole level of defense is escalated. Coach
Taylor put in a very quick ball handling lineup, and as a result, when the ball was picked off, they were able to Yep. There's Beamer again. Beamer again, and here's, here's Frazier, there's Bridget. And right here, here's the Jamima Joseph show, right there. Uh, that's uh, enjoying it consistently throughout the entire game here tonight, Todd. Not just old class. When the team needs it now, especially with just a little over two minutes remaining, you set an example and making sure the tempo is still aggressive. No question, no doubt about it. The Highlanders putting together a really excellent fourth quarter so far. And we're getting a look at what this team can look like next season. You know, it's the last game of this season. And of course, the seniors, they did fantastic work. And uh, and and Selena Scott, or not Selena Scott, I'm sorry, Caitlin Seely out there, one of those se one of those seniors on the floor right now. But on top of that, this is the young team that we're going to be seeing moving forward, and the future looks bright. Hutchinson with it, 2.05 remaining in the game. She kicks it out. Bridget Frazier's shot is up, it's no good. Jamima with the rebound. Look at that. Who else, Who else tonight? Look at that, adjust her shot with spin off the board, blackboard for the two. Eight point lead now for the Highlanders. A minute 45 remaining as T.R. Griffin puts that one in. And Jamima kicks it off to Frazier, back over to Jamima. Jamima Joseph's jumper is no good. Frazier with the shot, no good. Selena Scott pulls down the rebound and gets called for the travel. Six point lead for the Highlanders, a minute 30 remaining in the game. They will extend their full court pressure. Great play by Frazier, deflect the ball, make Salem work to get the ball up the floor. As Rigo with it now. Defended by Caitlin Seeley. Rigo shot is up, it's no good. Jamima Joseph with the rebound. It's two on two, Jamima Joseph will go up, put it in, and she will go to the line. It's been the Jamima Joseph show here in this fourth period and actually taught throughout the game. You can see each, she scored in each quarter, but she's really put the team in her back here in the fourth period, showing what you can do with some aggressiveness at both ends of the floor, Todd. No doubt about it, no doubt at all. Sabima Joseph looking to complete the three-point play. No good. Eight-point lead for the Highlanders as Griffin has it, puts up the three, no good. And we have a whistle, a timeout is called. Timeout is called. Timeout was called by the Salem coach. I taught at this stage of the game now with an eight point lead. The clock is the Lady Highlanders' friend. Yes. They don't need to be in a hurry with the shot clock. They can afford to keep the ball outside, work it around. We're still looking inside. Right now, we don't want the clock to stop. Straight up on defense, hands up in the air. Don't reach in. If a shot goes up, even if it's made, the clock keeps running. We don't want to foul and stop the clock. So I'm sure Coach Brandon Taylor is saying straight up, hands up in the air. If the ball goes in, he's got five seconds in by the ball. Don't be in a hurry to put the ball in play. Pick it up, inbound it, come up the floor. Take as much time as possible. I'll be looking inside for either Janina Joseph or Bridget Frazier when we do get the ball up. No doubt. Now, just talking about Jamima and what she's done tonight, she had 10 points through the first three quarters. She has 14 points in the fourth quarter. 24 points on the night so far for Jamima Joseph. 58.2 seconds remaining in the game. The Witches will inbounds. Highlanders lead by eight. Griffin, her shot is no good. Bridget Frazier with the rebound. And a foul is called. 
as that will go against Cantone. It goes against Team Anna Cantone. 13, Anna Cantone. That's her third personal foul, or actually her fourth personal, my bad. Well, and it's in the uh, Frazier uh, Joseph show tonight. Uh, Bridget has been absolutely tireless at both ends of the floor, rebounding. And obviously, Janima has just been the show here in the fourth quarter, especially. A little talk there. Referee spending a moment with Jamima Joseph. I don't think he was telling her good game. I'm not totally sure what he was saying. Settle down, settle down and play basketball. Probably something along those lines. Bridget Frazier's first shot is up. It's no good. Come on, Bridget. And you can see her face is a little exasperated because she's such a competitor. And and she's been my MVP all season long. So. No question. No doubt. There it is. And that's good. And a timeout. So we have a foul. Some of the foul number three, Jamima Joseph. So Jamima gets called for a push off. That's her fourth personal. 50 seconds remaining. Highlanders leading by nine. Cantone feeds it off to Rigo. Rigo loses control of it. Selena Scott down on the ground fighting for it. Alternating possession goes to the Highlanders. Come on, Bridget. Good job there by Griffin as she knifed in there. Almost stole that one away. A little frustrated, Coach Haley, because she had a play set up that was supposed to get the ball in safely, and it didn't, so I know she's frustrated at this point. 37.6 seconds left in the game. Salem with the ball now, looking to inbounds. So get it to Griffin. That's a jump ball once again. Selena Scott, lots of effort out there. Uh, this is the quick team. These are the... the Plays as you mentioned earlier, Todd. Everybody can hit on the ball, and everybody's quick. Cantone looking for it, trying to find Rigo. Rigo's pass, though, looking for Beltre. Stolen away as it missed Beltre. Bridget Frazier gets fouled immediately, so she will go to the line. If there's Honestly, if there's, if there's one negative right now, it's the foul shooting for the uh, for the Islanders. It has not been good, um, and otherwise this could be a, a substantial lead. It's a good lead now, but it could be a lot more distant had those free throws been good. Frazier, no good. Second free throw. Good. Ten point lead for the Highlanders. Straight up defense now. And there it is, Bridget Frazier, one more time. <laughs> she is everywhere on the floor. There is no question about that. 28.1 seconds remaining. We have a timeout, timeout on Somerville. the floor. Somerville taking the timeout. Coach Fridas Haley giving high fives all around. So this five, this group of five young ladies coming off the floor. And there's your uh, future right there, looking at those five between their quickness and their ability to maintain composure. And Jamima Joseph leading this comeback here in the second half, Todd. It's been, it should be inspirational for all of her teammates. I 100% I, I agree with you of Bridget Frazier and her MVP status. I 100% agree with you that it's a Frazier and Joseph show. However, I want to say Jill Hutchinson making some nice guest appearances because she's the straw that stirs this drink. She controls the tempo of this offense. She has matured in a big way. Beginning of the season, she was very tentative, wasn't looking to go inside, was always passing off. You can see tonight the running right hand to go inside, looking to move the ball inside. She's quietly gotten more confident in the season. She's gained more experience. Yeah. Absolutely. So we look now and we look on the floor. It's senior night and the seniors began this game and the seniors are out right now. 28.1 seconds left. Griffin's shot is up and it's good. Griffin for three. It's a seven point lead for the Highlanders now. 
And the foul. Kaylin Seeley will go to the line for two. Single foul number 11, Stephanie Canto. It's a nice move by Coach Fray to say to get the seniors out. She's got a substantial lead, has the opportunity to do it. Very classy move by the coach to let these seniors finish up the game. And for a lot of them who may not be playing in college or going on, it's going to be a nice memory. And Seal rolls that one home. Second shot by Caitlin is up, and it's good. Six points on the night for Caitlin Seeley. And that pass saved from going out of bounds, but saved to Megan Barnes for the Highlanders. Megan tried to hand that one off to Caitlin Seeley. Griffin, very uh, aggressive on that tie ball. 7.7 .7 seconds remaining. The Highlanders will have the ball. They also have the nine point lead. 45-36 is your Highlander lead. The seniors are on the floor. As Barnes gets it on the inbounds. That's knocked out of bounds. I think it will stay with the Highlanders. It will. So Kaylin Seeley will inbounds once again. That one's out of bounds. Off of the Witches once again, 3.8 seconds left. The chant of seniors goes up. So they try to find Megan Barnes on the left block. Out of bounds. Off of Rigo that time. So Gerfried will inbounds this one. Gives it to Megan Barnes. Barnes feeds it to Gerfried. Gerfried's shot is up, it's no good. But the Highlanders come away with the nine point win, 45 to 36 on senior night. So a good win here to close out the season. Three and 13 is the record for the Highlanders. But like you said, we were seeing the future right there in the fourth quarter for the Highlanders. And Todd, uh, as I said, a very classy move by Coach Seal Trace Haley to not only start the game with all the seniors, but you have the opportunity to finish tonight's game with the seniors, a great memory, but we can't understate what uh, terrific performance Janima Joseph had tonight, showing her athletic prowess. Bridget Frazier and Jill Hutchinson also contributed in a big way, especially in the second half. The second period was, a, was very cool, they scoring a couple of points, only scoring two points. Certainly made up for it in the third and fourth quarter. No doubt about it, the Highlanders came out, got that lead in the first quarter, but then, like you said, only scored those two points in the second quarter. Had good looks, had good shots, just didn't finish any of them off. And then in the second half, specifically in that fourth quarter, Jamima Joseph, uh, uh, 14 points in that fourth quarter, uh, led all scores with 24 points on the night. Great night for Jamima Joseph, great night for Jill Hutchinson, great night for Bridget Frazier as well. The, the seniors led those young ladies to what they've been able to develop to this season. So we get a look at that future that we can see moving ahead, looking towards next year, but you've got to celebrate the seniors as well, because that's that leadership crew that we're able to help develop players like a Jamima Joseph, helping to develop a Jill Hutchinson and players like that. And TC has obviously set quite an example, even through her injury, she was in practice and being around to yep. help out and, and being that senior influence and showing the uh, underclassmen that this is what happens. Even when you get hurt, you can still help the team. Absolutely. Absolutely. Think, no question about the that. This is tonight, Todd. Yeah, the leadership of uh, Taylor Casey, just just tremendous uh, through her injury and the leadership that she provided even with that injury. She was at practice multiple times, even, you know, all the time, even with the injury. It was a great leader. Um, the seniors did a great job leading this team. So just, just a very impressive job. By the, uh, by the seniors on this senior night and by the Highlanders on senior night as they come away with the nine point victory, 45 to 36. Um, a, a really good win as they, they had some difficulties there in the middle of the game, but um, were able to show out at the end exactly what they were made of and what they were capable of uh, as Jamima Joseph just helped to pull them away. Put her, put, she, she put them directly on her back and led them to, that, led them to the victory tonight.
The future is very promising. Uh, we'll certainly be working on our free throws, I think, over the course of the summer. <laughs> yes. But uh, with the emphasis that uh, Jamima showed with her example at both ends of the floor, not only offensively but defensively, she was a huge force uh, taking on Beltre, who last time uh, was the leading scorer. They neutralized her very well this evening, and as a result, got very aggressive at both ends of the floor, which led to the win. Absolutely. A great job by the Highlanders. As um, there, were, there was talk, maybe the seniors would come by and visit with us. I'm not 100% sure, so we're trying to vamp a little bit to see whether we're going to be able to get them over. I know one thing that I just want to point out, by the way, um, uh, Coach Sheila Fritos Haley, she really, really cares and, and loves her players. And you could see that in the senior night presentation when she was talking about her players, she was talking about these seniors and watching them develop over the years. And you can see it when you talk to her, whenever I talk to her pregame just her excitement about the young crew that's coming in as well. She's so proud of what they've accomplished so far, and she's so excited about what they can accomplish moving forward, and she cares so much about her players, and it's and great to see that. It, it really is, and uh, looking around the, uh, the gym here tonight, Todd, uh, if you can see behind the bench, there is a uh, 20 by 24 um, color photo of each one of the seniors over there on the wall, and on the back wall behind the basket is the jerseys of all of the players yep. with their name and some appropriate signage on underneath. And that's basically Coach Freitas Haley making sure that their seniors are recognized. Uh, and some of them didn't play as much as others, but uh, they certainly were part of a team. And I can tell you from years of experience that you're not going to remember too many of the scores, but you will remember all of your teammates. Yeah, you remember, you remember your teammates, you remember your interactions, you remember the times you had together and and every single member of the team is incredibly important there we go yeah, that's why i'm not i do here we go so Great some job snacks. By the concessionaires as well absolutely some snacks coming in from the uh, from the side there very excited about that but um, um a quick well, shout out to uh, the quick shout out yes. to the tremendous uh, uh, production team here. Uh, yes, everybody behind to. the cameras on the switches have just been absolutely terrific to us, and it's been an absolute pleasure for me to have the great opportunity to uh, work alongside you it's and to do our best in trying to bring uh, a little bit of uh, information and commentary uh, to the season. Looking forward to another big season next absolutely. year. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's been great. It's been a fantastic season. Everybody, the, the crew and uh, everybody else at Somerville Educational Channel 15, it's been great. Um, I've enjoyed a, you know, a, a, a good four or five years doing this and I love every single minute of it and look forward to continuing doing it as we look forward towards the future. But uh, that's going to do it for the 2018-2019 season uh, for the Somerville Highlanders. Uh, the uh, the uh, Highlanders finishing the season with a record of 3-13, and 13, but finishing on a winning note with this 45-36 to 36 victory. So a great job by the Highlanders tonight. I think that's going to do it for us tonight, Jack. Thank you so much once again. A great season. Thank I really God. appreciate thank it. Thank you so much, and thank you very much to all of you for watching and enjoying, hopefully, what we're able to do for you and uh, what these young ladies were able to do this season. Thank you so much. Great, and uh, you have been watching Somerville Highlander Basketball, Somerville Educational Channel 15.